Okay, so just a thought on 1.2 number 9. On 1.2 number 9, we have this function. Y is what? It's e to the x minus 1 on x is something and 1 minus e to the x on x is something else. Okay, so it's e to the x minus 1 when x is positive. And it's 1 minus e to the x when x is negative. And they want me to show that this satisfies a, a differential equation, y prime is absolute value of y plus 1. 1 minus e to the negative x. Oh. Yes, you are in fact correct. The second one reads 1 minus e to the minus. That would really screw me up here in a second. Okay, so how can you do this? Like, there should be three kind of parts, two of which are pretty clear. What are the two of which parts that are pretty clear? Below zero and above zero. Yeah, right? You should go above zero. Like, just assume x is bigger than zero. Work with that. So if x is bigger than zero, that means that y is e to the x minus 1, right? And what's y prime? Should just be e to the x, right? OK, so then I'm left wondering, is e to the x, uh, now I need the absolute value of e to the x minus 1, right? Plus 1. And I'm just wondering, like, hey, is this true? What's e to the x minus 1? Like, anytime x is bigger than 0, what is that quantity? Positive, negative, maybe both? Yeah, it's strictly positive, right? Well, those are just absolute value brackets, right? Those aren't parentheses. Can't you just get rid of the ones? Or does that hold the one in there? Yeah, so this absolute value bar is being applied to this minus 1. Right, so I need to know, maybe this is, so this thing, right, when you have absolute value bar of stuff, Right? Like whatever the stuff is, the way this is defined is either you get the stuff out if what? If it's all positive. Yeah, if the stuff itself is positive. Oops, that was supposed to be greater than that. Right? Like, that's what happens. When it's positive, you just leave it alone, right? Even if it's 7 minus 3, right? 7 minus 3 is positive, so you leave it. Leave it at 7 minus 3. It's still 4. Right? But if the stuff in there is negative, what do you do? Yeah, you make it positive. How do you make something that's negative positive? Slap an extra negative sign on it. Right? So the absolute value of stuff is the stuff if it's positive or minus this stuff if it's negative. And then you got to ask, what happens at 0? 0. Yeah, 0 doesn't fit in here right now. So I just want to know which piece gets 0. Uh, the, top one is either positive or negative. the convention is to stick it in the top one. Yeah, the absolute value of 0 should be 0, right? Because really this thing's asking how far from zero is this stuff. So if you plug zero in there, you better get zero out. But it doesn't really matter, right, whether you get zero or minus zero, because those are still both zero. You guys see that? That's really me saying that this function's continuous at zero. You guys see that? Okay, so I filled something in. Now, I'm wondering about this guy. Is e to the x minus 1, for x is positive, keep in mind, Yeah, it'll always is be that bigger. at least always bigger than or equal to 0? Just above yeah. 0. Yeah. To plus 1, yeah. Plus yeah, and because I'm strictly above 0, right, this stuff is actually positive that whole time, right? So I don't need to worry about the absolute value bars. What do they do to something that's positive? Yeah, they just leave it alone, right? 
So this thing here is actually just the same, right? It's e to the x minus 1 plus 1. I just did that. It would be just then that's e to the minus because e to the zero is one. Yeah, e to the zero is one. So right. So e to anything just slightly bigger than zero is just slightly bigger than one. Another way you could see this is with shifting rules. So another way to see this is to remember that the exponential function looks like this, and it passes through one high. Right, so this is the graph of e to the x. If you shift it down one, right, which is really what that subtract one is doing, you're just rewriting the x-axis as being here instead. You guys see that? And then anytime I'm actually bigger than zero, right, I've actually moved that way a little bit, which means that I've actually moved up. Kind of with me on that? Okay, so this stuff is actually this stuff, and now the minus one and the plus one, those cancel, and you get e to the x is e to the x. Cool. So, Rockstar, we're good on x is bigger than zero. Now we need to go play this same rigmarole for x is smaller than zero. You guys with me? So at x is smaller than zero, what do I need to do? Yeah, so I need the other equation, right? Because when x is smaller than zero, y is 1 minus e to the minus x. Right? So I need y prime, which is e to the negative. Or e to the negative x. Oh yeah. I think I get e to the negative x, right? I get negative e to the negative x times negative 1. Pretty good. Okay, and then what do I do with that? Plug it in. Okay, so I got e to the negative x, and I'm wondering, is that equal to the absolute value of 1 minus e to the minus x plus 1? And now this is where the other half of that thing comes in, right? Because 1 minus e to the minus x is, is that either positive or negative? Negative. Positive, right? Because it's always negative. Well, e to the negative x will still be so positive at all times, but, but it's 1 minus that is all positive. Like, like, we're like you, we would get at e to the positive value, right? Every time? Oh, okay, so that part there, right, e to the negative x for x is less for x is less than zero acts like e to the positive x, right? So that's bigger than one, and then I'm subtracting it from one. So what do I get? Negative something. So this whole dude here, right? Like I'm looking at that and I'm thinking. This thing is negative. Okay, so how did the absolute value function act with negative stuff? It turns it back to positive. It turns it back to positive by slapping a negative sign. Slapping a negative sign on the whole freaking thing. Oh. Right, which is maybe the problem. Yeah, that was it. So you got to slap a negative sign on all of one minus e to the minus x plus one. And now, what do you end up with? e to the negative x. Check. Cool. So now I have established, I think, that this solves for x is strictly bigger than 0, and it solves for x is strictly smaller than 0, and now I have some weirdness going on at 0. You guys see that? So I need to know about the derivative at 0. You guys see that? So what I, what I need to do to figure out the derivative at 0, right? so I'm looking for y prime at 0. But what's weird about this? Yeah, this function's really kind of cool. Uh, this guy probably has some slopes of tangent lines, right? Like, in general, if you have a piecewise function, 
There's some graph, right? And they maybe meet at some point or not, right? Like, piecewise function usually looks like this, right? Like there's a piece and then a different piece. You guys all good with this? Uh, and I guess for this one, they put the zero in the, in the right-hand side. So I should fill in that up. Now, how likely is it that there's even a derivative at zero? Is there a derivative at zero in this case? No, there's no way to define a consistent slope of a tangent line at zero. That doesn't even make any sense here. Right? So the very first thing you would need is for this to be continuous, right? So you would need y of 0 to equal the limit from the left, right? You would need these two dots to be in the same place to even start playing this game. You guys see that? So if I plug 0 in here, what do I get? 0. zero. If I plug 0 in here, what do I get? Zero. Also 0. Cool. So I don't have this case, right? What I have at the very least is they both meet down here at 0. And maybe I have something like this going on, in which case I would have what going on at zero as far as the derivative goes. Still uh, doesn't exist. You would still have a problem, right? Because there's a cusp there. So I still can't get a tangent line out of this. So what I need to ask is, what's the limit of the derivative from the right? That'll get me this slope. What else do you need to ask? What's the derivative from the left? Because that'll get you a different slope, possibly. If they happen to be the same, then you have an honest to God derivative of a piecewise function at zero. You guys see that? That would be really improbable. But the book seems to believe that this is a cool enough function for that to be the case. Well, that's basically just like a regular function that just happens to be chopped up. Right? Like yeah. It's not going to be anything weird. It could still be weird. Mm -hmm. okay. The real numbers are strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this is a thing that happens in real analysis that doesn't happen in, in complex analysis, but it's cool. You can kind of nicely seam two functions together. That's a neat thing about the real numbers. So here I have two functions, and I think these are neatly seamed together. There's no, like, this is necessarily the God-given other part of this function. Like, that seems like a perfectly reasonable way to continue in a continuous fashion, right? Like, just forget this bottom thing. Sure. But this happens to be two functions that are different, right? But are similar enough that I can seam them together there and have a derivative. Which is pretty crazy, actually. Let's call that. So I should check the, so this should be, maybe, if this thing exists, it's the limit of y prime from x tending to 0 from the positive. Right? And I'm not sure this is going to work. Because that thing would have to equal what? The limit. Okay, so if these two things are equal, then I can take away this question mark. And that's actually what the derivative of zero will be. So, what the right hand one, the right hand side, I'm asking for the limit x tending to zero from the positive. When x is a little bigger than zero, which derivative are you looking at? Yeah, I'm looking at the first one I took, right? I'm looking at e to the f. So what's this value? 1. Don't know if it's that one. Right, like that's continuous function. Plug value. Okay, that's the right-hand one. For the left-hand one, I want to take the limit x tending to 0 from the negative side of... Yeah, that should be e to the negative x, which is also continuous, right? And I happen to get out of this. Also, 
guys with me on that? So at zero, y prime of zero is one. I'm good with that. I checked that stuff. I got one. That's what y prime at zero is. So how do I check? I was still trying to solve a differential equation, right? Not playing calc 1 games. So I played a calc 1 game. I found the derivative of this function at oh. 0. And then what do I need to check about it? Say y prime is 1 and plug it into the... So if y prime is 1, right? Really, this is me checking x equals 0. Right? I got all this stuff to the right. I got all this stuff to the left. And now I'm checking that one point in the middle. Right? So at 0, I'm wondering, is y prime of 0 equal to the absolute value of y at 0 plus 1? OK, y prime at 0 is 1, right? And what's y at 0? 1 minus 1? 1 minus 1? Mm -hmm. So I got 0 plus 1. Oh, and I should have my wondering hat on. Right? Mm -hmm. And I do in fact believe that 1 is 0 plus 1. Somehow I'm willing to believe. So I have here all three pieces, right? I checked it on the positive numbers, I checked it on the negative numbers, and then it was a giant pain in the ass, but I checked it at zero. Cool? That makes sense?